What's going on, everyone? Happy Thursday. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, and testing negative for all those viruses that can make us sick. It is time now for the Thursday edition of the Virus Update for Thursday, October 9th, 2025. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all the viruses that make us sick with the latest news, data, and information, and really anything I can find to help keep you informed. Want to stay informed? Just subscribe down below, give this video a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and of course, leave your comments down below. Alrighty, we do have several updates, uh, weekly updates, and a few news stories to talk about today. Starting off with this, measles case confirmed in child in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, as you know, South Carolina has been dealing with uh, several uh, cases of measles. This is now the 11th case in the state with eight in, in uh, Spartanburg County since July. So measles cases in South Carolina, they do continue to go up at this time. All right, moving on now to this. Their neighboring state, North Carolina, if we can get this story to come up. Yes, North Carolina is now dealing with a problem of their own. And this is relatively early for this to be happening. Not surprising based on the past few years, but North Carolina has already reported their first flu death of the 2025-2026 season. Here we are, we're only at October 9th, and already we're talking about someone who has passed away from flu. Uh, flu is going to be increasing in just a few weeks here in the United States. There have already been a few wastewater sites here and there starting to show flu, and I think this is going to be a really bad flu season. I'll give you more reasons why in just a few moments. All right, take a look at this. Actually, here's one of those reasons now. In Japan, Ministry of Health declares influenza epidemic after 4,030 people were treated for flu. An unprecedented early surge in influenza cases has compelled um, Japan's health authorities to declare a nationwide epidemic as medical experts warn the virus may be evolving faster and spreading more easily than it ever has before. Gee, I wonder why that could be happening. What have we been going through since 2020? Yeah, COVID? What does COVID do? Oh, well, COVID can damage the immune system. Boom. Flu now can spread much more easy. So, yeah, again, uh, Japan seeing an early rise in flu. And, in fact, this is the second earliest flu outbreak in two decades, five weeks early. Yeah, that's not good. And unfortunately, the news for flu does not stop there. I actually have more flu news. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. First off, this in Scotland, reported COVID cases. Take a look at the chart. Yes, COVID cases in Scotland are continuing to rise at this time. Yeah, not a good thing whatsoever. Now moving over to the UK when it comes to COVID. Uh, there are now over 3,000 cases in one week. That's 486 increase, or up by 19%. Weekly deaths, 87, up by 3.6%. Uh, healthcare usage, that's going upward. That's over 2,000 people admitted to the hospital. The positivity rate is now over 12%. And in fact, at one point, it did hit 13.2%. So the positivity rate for COVID there continues to rise. But we got to look at something else. I think I just mentioned it a little bit ago. Flu. Flu is now starting to rise in the UK. The use of healthcare, it's starting to go up. The positivity rate, it's starting to go up. If we go back for a second, take a look at that positivity rate. You can clearly see it is starting to go upward. And we do actually want to take a look at the influenza report in the UK. But there's one thing we want to take a look at. The ages 15 to 24 years old in England. Take a look at this. Yes, COVID's in the orange. You can see. The rates have been going up, and then times are dropping a little bit for that age. But take a look at flu. Boing! Yeah, going straight up like a rocket. And you, as you can see here, this is uh, going up relatively early. This is not a good thing whatsoever. So the positivity rate for flu, yeah, look at that. In children, ages of, well, we'll say young adults too, 15 through 24 years old. A 24-year-old person is not a child anymore, but that age group, 15 to 24 years old, the positivity rate for flu is now, yeah, over 20%. That is rapidly going up. That's concerning. We saw what was happening in Australia uh, just a few months ago when they had winter. And you know what? This is a tell 
warning sign of what's to come here in the United States. Plus, we're going to have another COVID wave this winter. So, yes, uh, things are not trending in the right direction at the moment when it comes to flu. I'm really concerned about what's going to happen this flu season. Also, take a look at this. This is a, a dashboard that shows European respiratory viruses. And I want to show you Poland. Look at the positivity rate when this is COVID right here. 53, that is COVID, right? Yes, 53.6%. And when we take a look at uh, some of the other viruses, let's see what that is doing right now. And let's see, the other viruses' positivity rate, they're not showing it for a flu, but you get the idea here. Poland's having a big COVID problem at the moment. And they're not doing a lot of testing, but again, that positivity rate is really high at this time. All right. Speaking of flu, let's go back to the United States, shall we? Let's take a look at the migration of birds in the United States and uh, see what's going on there because that does lead to the spread of bird flu. And take a look at this. Over 1.2 billion birds in the east migrated to the south in the last 24 hours. Yeah, it's getting really cold up in the northeast and, well, that is leading to more migration of birds. So at the peak last night or at the peak in the last 24 hours, over 1 billion birds. Wow, that is just crazy to think of that many birds migrating at once. Let's take a look at what's going on with air qualities. As we do that, let's pause for a hydration break, shall we? Alrighty, doesn't uh, that feel much better? And take a look at this. Not bad air qualities, eh, a few minor issues along the Gulf Coast, a few in the Northwest, but this map is much better than it has looked in a long time doing a live look in an emergency department or excuse me ambulance calls ems calls which does take people to the emergency department in pinellas county florida we do see unknown problem is showing up multiple times one two three four five six times for that that's not a good thing we also uh, can take a look at what happened in philadelphia yesterday which was uh tuesday or excuse me wednesday yesterday was wednesday uh, 728 EMS incidents, so that is well below 800. I am happy about that. Still have not seen an update on Philadelphia when it comes to COVID, but take a look at this, just outside of Philadelphia. And this is late. We're late with today's video. I'm admitting it. There were some noise interruptions outside. I'm not even going to get into what that was all about. You don't want to know. But uh, EMS, 21 calls right now at this time of night. That is really high, and we do see respiratory emergency. We see... A lot of accidents. We see a lot of things going on. Hopefully, it will look better when we take a look at Chester County. And we do see eh, there are a few things going on there as well. Respiratory emergency three times. Also, sick person is showing up at this time. All right, moving on now. We're going to skip over to hospitals for today because uh, we do want to get through some data from CJS. And taking a look at what's going on in New York State. 621 people tested positive in the last 24 hours. Well, I say last 24 hours, but some of it is beyond that because this does include New York State, which does, excuse me, New York City, which does update on Thursdays. Hospitalizations continuing to drop. 436 COVID patients at this time in New York State. 32 of them need to be in the ICU. So that's not a good thing. Let's briefly take a look at some wastewater data, shall we? And in Florida... This is near Miami now we're taking a look at. We do see there's medium levels for COVID. We do see RSV is less than high. We also see norovirus is in the medium category at this time. And let's just randomly take a look at somewhere else at this time. But again, uh, I'm concerned about what's going to happen in just a few weeks here in the United States. I think we're going to quickly start to see flu activity pick up for at least round one. Will there be a second round uh, later in the winter? Who knows? Last year there was. Uh, let's go out to Colorado now and see what's going on in South Parker, Colorado, where COVID is still listed high. Most recent updates shows that there was an increase for COVID there, so that's not good. Mpox was detected back in July. That's never a good thing. Let's also just randomly take a look at somewhere else, and let's see what's going on up in the Northeast. Of course, the Northeast is still listed high when it comes to COVID. Uh, Bridgewater, New Jersey, what is going on there? We still see high levels of uh, COVID there. Take a look at this. Some detections, now it went up and it went back down, but some detections now of influenza A. Still is dead low, but influenza A is starting to make an appearance in wastewater in Bridgewater, New Jersey. You know, this is uh, not far from Princeton Uni 
University in Princeton, New Jersey. So, and I believe this wastewater site, yeah, it may include that area. Uh, it, actually, it's just a little bit north there, but you get the point here. New Jersey, yeah, uh, starting to see some activity show up there. Let's go somewhere in the Midwest now. How about a uh, Detroit area, or just north of Detroit? Warren, Michigan, it's a big wastewater site. COVID still looks at highest down a little bit, but yeah, it did also go back up a little bit. And let's see what's going on with the other viruses. Everything else is fine. Detection of hepatitis A back in July. Alrighty, moving on now to Ohio. And in Ohio, we do see four people hospitalized for RSV. That's up a little bit. And we do see 13 for flu, uh, 261 for COVID. How much of a drop is that? It was 293 last week, so it did drop at this time. All right, let's get over to some data from CJS now. And yeah, that's going to be all I have for you today. Uh, taking a look at uh, some of his uh, weekly numbers. Again, a lot of this is the state level. We do not have data from the CDC. We probably will not get data from the CDC tomorrow. The United States government remains shut down at this time. The Senate voted to block it yet again. Uh, in some cases, uh, blocking it is a good thing because if they pass this current thing, it could have big implications on health care. And as you know, the healthcare system in the United States is having major problems right now. I was listening to a town hall the other day with my local congressman, and I'm telling you, he's concerned that if things keep progressing the way they are, we could see a national healthcare system collapse in the United States. You heard me right, collapse in the United States. Uh, that's not a good thing, man. Quite frankly, the hospital, the pressures that the hospitals may see in the coming months from a combination of all the viruses, that's going to be bad enough. Alrighty, uh, moving on. Here's some data from CJS. Uh, Tuesday, numbers. Uh, Florida, 354 new COVID cases. Hey, that's way down now. Puerto Rico, 194 cases. Uh, new York, 793 new cases. That seems like a high number compared to what we were seeing. Maybe that also includes, probably does include some numbers from the weekend as well. Uh, usually that's a multi-day total. Maine, weekly number, 149 new cases and one new state reported death. Maryland reports uh, 587 new cases and 11 new state reported deaths. Michigan, from last Thursday, 178 state reported hospitalizations. Ohio, 261 state reported hospitalizations. Virginia, 1,359 new positive tests and nine new state reported deaths. This is all COVID now. Wednesday. Florida, 337 new cases and 23 new state reported deaths, including one from 2021. New York, 382 new cases, which seems oddly low given what had been reported just the day before. Okay, so maybe uh, New York State, something weird going on there. Puerto Rico, 258 new cases, five new state reported deaths. That would be their number of deaths for the week. New Jersey delayed from last week. Get this, 2,838 new cases and six new state reported deaths. Some of the Northeast states are still elevated for COVID, and that is a one-week total, I believe. Oregon, weekly, 186 new positive tests and three new state reported deaths. Washington, 619 emergency department visits and nine new state reported deaths. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Thursday edition of the virus update. Again, I'm concerned what's coming ahead for flu. RSV, all those other viruses. RSV not rising over in the UK just yet, but uh, what's coming down the line with the, you know, the combination of viruses, oh, it's not going to be good. And in the UK, that COVID wave has not ended yet. So some people who just, I tweeted this on X, some people who just had COVID may turn around and be sick once again with flu now that flu is going up. And, you know, COVID can weaken the immune system, so... Ooh, someone's going to probably say, oh, I just had flu and it was worse than the COVID case I recently had. Well, it's because you had COVID. COVID can weaken the immune system. We've known about this for several years now. I think some people are slowly starting to wake up to it, but it's not nearly enough. And some people are also, thankfully, starting to wake up to how bad things have been getting every winter now with the viruses. Alrighty, folks, we'll have another update again tomorrow. If you enjoyed today's update, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and leave your comments down below. I will see everyone again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe everyone, and have a fantastic Thursday afternoon. Thanks for watching.